tech company that are basically building tools to help farmers understand and, and value um, what they grow. We're building tech that essentially allows a farmer to take their smartphone and point it at their crop that they've just harvested and that gives them a grade and then once they've got a quantitative valuation of the grade of what they've grown we help them to discover an appropriate market to sell that grade of produce obviously agricultural strategy but also just the environment that the farm is working within and there, there are things that he can control but things or that he or she can't control as well so you're going to get this natural variance in in production but we're tackling food waste but we're also tackling food security in a meaningful way because we're helping farmers essentially you know in some cases double the amount of what what they sell simply because they're now getting these new opportunities of finding ways to sell perfectly edible and healthy produce that they perhaps couldn't have in the past. You are bringing technology into the hands of farmers uh, who would otherwise maybe have issues trying to sell uh, their produce uh, to, the, to the marketplace. Yes, so, and, and I'd say the technology is a big part of it, but it's also, I think we work a lot with small-scale farmers, and one of the things that we've realized that they're... The, the way they interface with their markets is not perhaps as as useful as it can be. And this is not a, I don't think this is a failing of farmers specifically. This is more of a failing of the infrastructure that has arisen globally, I'd say, um, in response to the agricultural production system. Most buyers and aggregators and wholesalers prefer to work with large-scale growers because of sort of two fundamental aspects of food production, uh, especially when it comes to high value horticulture. As if, you, if you're a buyer, you want to get something at the best price, obviously, but the two things that are really important to you is you want something called consistency of supply. So you want your tomatoes, your cabbages, your cauliflowers coming in at a fixed rate throughout the week, right? So you want, you want X number of tons every day. Ideally, you want it first thing in the morning so that you can Sort of optimize your schedule for delivering and getting goods to your customers who may be supermarkets or restaurants or whoever, um, street vendors, whoever they may be. And the second thing you also want is, and I'd say all industries want this, they want some form of standardization of production and standardization of product. So those standards may be different across different markets, like I've just mentioned, but they want that standard. You grew up on a tomato farm in Zimbabwe. Uh, Back in the day, people didn't use technology, but a lot of people were able to uh, to produce uh, like tomatoes and other produce and take it to the marketplace. What is so different today now that uh, you are into this space where you're trying to uh, bring certain tools uh, to farmers uh, to help them maybe access even better markets? I grew up in this large tomato farm. My dad was the farmer when all of the land transitions started to happen, he started working with a lot of small-scale farmers that had been farming already for, you know, maybe 10 years alongside him. And he saw that they still had these sorts of problems, um, even back then. But he sort of managed to provide a level of training and standards uh, to these small-scale growers so they could take advantage of all the key skills he had amassed as a successful large-scale grower. And when you know, ultimately, when this land transition happened, very little in terms of productivity for the, the supply demands my father had in Harare were affected because suddenly all of these farmers he had been working with were trained up to the right spec. So he could go out to the rural areas. He could just take his eight-ton truck, he'd buy off them, and then he'd sell it um, at, at the retail store that my family set up in Harare. So we, we wanted to see couldn't we just use tech to try and enhance this communication and improve these relationships because of with that, right? Rather than setting up a centralized training facility, which doesn't really scale, whereas with tech, it can scale very rapidly. How do people, uh, let's say, uh, perceive tech uh, or bringing tech into their farms? Farmers aren't necessarily scared of adapting to new technology. I. Every time I speak to a farmer, most, most farmers are inherently almost scientists in nature, right? They experiment daily, trying new things on their farm. I find that all farmers we talk to are very excited about what we're doing. Oliver, uh, thank you so much for your time. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks very much.